My interest in filmmaking came about in a couple of ways. Um, one, when I was at DePaul, uh, I originally started off as a business major. And when I realized that wasn't for me, I switched over um, through um, communications. And so through that process, I actually started doing um, performance art. That's like the very early stage of like my film interest. Um, I was doing performance art at DePaul for, for a couple of classes. And, you know, I was very comfortable in that, you know, being in, you know, being in front of a camera, but also just like being comfortable speaking because I had a hard time like kind of speaking, you know, in, in front of people. And so that really like was the beginning stages of like my film, you know, as a filmmaker. And then I started, you know, taking different communication courses and I wound up taking a Asian media representation course. It was just a random course that I was taking and thought would be interesting. And so through that process of, you know, taking that class and then also taking like a different, you know, sociology and music courses, um, I was like, there was this lack of, you know, stories that were being told, you know, by people with disabilities. I was like, why not, you know, share my story about my disability and what and what I go through on a daily basis. And so during my time at DePaul, I came up with the um, film, The Wheelchair Chronicles. Disability that, that I have, a muscular dystrophy, you know, it's very difficult for me to do a lot of things, especially from a filmmaking standpoint. And so one of the things that was like challenging for me was, you know, just collecting footage. That was a main challenge, you know, for me. And, you know, with my, with my disability, I'm often like moving around a lot in my chair. So one of the, the tricks that I learned during this process is that uh, when I would rent like equipment from DePaul, I would actually have like a small, I actually started off with a big camera, a very huge camera that just didn't work at all. And I wound up switching over to a much smaller, you know, compact, you know, camera that I could actually like sit in my lap. And so that's how I started, you know, collecting my footage, which just like this camera on my lap and just like, you know, recording my travels, you know, through my neighborhood and through parts of Chicago. I actually had a professor of mine who um, helped me through this process, who was sort of like a mentor to me. And her name is Camille DeBowles, and she was somebody that I really looked up to, and she had filmmaking experience. What I learned from her is that, you know, it, the, it's a process. You're not gonna, you know, learn everything like in one day, you know, do your experience of like filming and collecting footage and, you know, like, Doing, in, doing your interview, you know, this is gonna be a process and it's not gonna, you know, be a short one. It's gonna be a long journey for you. But as long as you stick with it, as long as you're learning and mastering your craft, I think, you know, that, that goes a long way in, you know, the, in, in, the pers in the process and in the journey. So it's gonna be a long journey, but I think it's you continue to enjoy what you're doing I think, you know, then the process is going to run smoothly and it's not going to like be great overnight, but it's going to, you know, when it clicks, it's going to, it's going to, it's all going to work out. I did a project that was um, focusing on, you know, people with disabilities and their experiences in the healthcare system. We um, interviewed eight different people during that process and, it, you know, what we were planning, the, when we were in the early stages of putting this project together, you know, we had to, you know, come together and meet on different occasions just to, you know, flesh out their ideas and, you know, you know, figure out what they wanted to talk about on camera. And, you know, practice, we did like a practice run with them on a couple of occasions just to make sure that they had their stories down because we didn't have a full, a whole lot of time to you know spend on each person and so that project was a three to five minute you know videos where we just talked to them about their experiences and you know how difficult you know they've had to 
you know, the difficulties that they've had with like the healthcare system, with the doctors that they've dealt with, or just trying to get, you, you know, the care that we all need. And then there was another project I did while I was still at DePaul. Um, and I think it was for my senior capstone. And um, I was a part of this um, film crew. Um, there was a film noir film called Deadly Embrace. During this pro project, you know, um, I was like an assistant director for this film. And it was like a week long, you know, process of like shooting and going to various different locations within the city. Um, it required like really long hours, mostly 10 to 12 hours a day of just like shooting and, you know, just making sure that everything was all set, you know, when we started the filmmaking process. And so my role, you know, as assistant director was working on call sheets, making sure people were in, the, you know, the right location, you know, uh, what time they needed to be there, you know, that process of making sure everybody's in the right place, you know, for the very next day of shooting. And so that was really my role, you know, in, in that film. And I really like learned a lot and gained a lot of experience from that project. What I enjoyed was the last day of shooting. Um, it was like an unbelievable experience because um, there was a dance scene, you know, in this film where, you know, you had these two dancers that were like in the middle of the dance floor and you had all of these like dancers, you know, surrounding them. And that day was kind of hectic because it was like a salsa. It was a salsa dance. And so we had like over 200 like salsa dancers, you know, from all over Chicagoland, you know, coming to do this, you know, this one scene. And it was just like amazing just watching it all unfold. And it was like one of my favorite like experiences from that film. I've met so many, you know, wonderful people in like the disability community and in the arts community. I made contact with, well they actually, they, they actually found me, but it's a company called Three Arts. And Three Arts is an organization that focuses on like um, artists of color, women artists and artists with disabilities. And I wound up meeting, a chance meeting with one of their um, executive directors. And we wound up talking and they wanted me to be a part of their like on their committee for their um, annual like three arts awards that like gives like various artists grants, you know, to do whatever type of work they want. And so just being a part of that process and just, you know, has been very valuable to me because I've met so many wonderful people, you know, just based off of that organization alone. I think one of the things I'm proud of is like my um, advocacy work. I think that's something that I have really like take take pride in and I really value, you know, the advocacy work that I'm doing because when I started the film, I was not like a, a disability advocate. I didn't particularly care to be an, an, an advocate, but like through this film and just being a part of the disability community, I've learned that, you know, advocacy is a very important part, you know, of you know of your experience. And I've done, you know, I've been a part of so many different, you know, groups and organizations that are focused on disability rights. And so, you know, for me, I value that and that's something that I take with me, you know, as long as long as I live.